Hi, I'm Alex, welcome to the channel and thanks for tuning in. So in today's video we're going to be talking about something a bit different for this channel. We're going to be talking about a penny stock that's in the cannabis sector. Now I know on this channel we mainly talk about SPACs, however that's just because I've found that's what most people seem to want to hear about. The majority of the investing I do is in B2B SaaS stocks underpinned by mission critical demand serving non-cyclical end markets. However, in posting this video, I do want to test whether there is interest and demand for people to see content on non-SPAC stocks, and in this case, a penny stock in the cannabis sector. Now, personally, from an investing perspective, I do have a strong interest in the cannabis sector. My first investment into the space was made in around late 2013, when I invested into the UK stock GW Pharmaceuticals. Now, it has been a long journey for GW, moving its listing to the US. However, very recently, they announced that they had accepted an offer from Jazz Pharmaceuticals, and so personally, that investing in GW Pharmaceuticals for me comes to an end. In today's video, we're going to be looking at a Kerner or ticker Kern, K-E-R-N. Now this is a really interesting SaaS software play on the cannabis sector. It has a very small market cap of around $135 million at the time of writing. And given the recent increase in interest and hype around the cannabis sector, partly driven by the potential federal legalization in the US, it seems like a pretty good time to be talking about this stock. So quickly before we get into this video, I did actually script and film this video when the share price was around $6.80 per share. Now obviously I hope to post it earlier today, however the share price has risen quite a lot. It now sits around $8.20. So please note, whilst everything in the video remains true, all of the points I made still stand firm. Some of the points I made around the market cap has changed, that's obviously increased. The valuation multiples has obviously increased as well. And finally, the broker estimate of $8. Today, that got increased to $10.50. So apologies for not getting this video up quicker. However, I just wanted to set that up at the start. As part of this video, we'll cover absolutely everything that we as investors should be aware of about with this stock, the positives, the negatives, and what my position is as well. As part of this video, I will share a load of information that I haven't seen anyone else share before. So if this is of interest, you don't want to miss out. If you're new to the channel and you like investing related content, then hit that subscribe button. The YouTube algorithm doesn't like my unpredictable upload schedule, and as a result, often my videos aren't put on people's homepages. If you want to make sure you don't miss uploads, hit that bell button next to the subscribe button, and hopefully that way it should be pushed onto your homepage as well. If you like the video, please hit the like button. In this scenario, it's also super interesting to understand whether people are interested in seeing me talk about other stocks and non-SPAC stocks on this channel. So if you are, please hit that like button, it's massively appreciated. As always, whilst my full-time office-based job is investing, I'm not a financial advisor. This video is purely for educational and entertainment purposes only, but let's get straight into it. So, what do they do? Well, in the simplest terms, a Kerner is a cannabis enterprise software company, providing a software that enables seed-to-shelf tracking and a technology underpinned by digital tags. They have a number of products which, for the customers, are absolutely essential in tracking compliance with laws and regulations, inventory management, supply chain management, payments, and ultimately is a full ERP and CRM proposition. What is particularly interesting in the case of a Kerner is that they're used by all players in the value chain, including government bodies and organisations. They also have strong integration with any other enterprise software packages which its customers may be using, for example accounting packages, and as you can see from this chart, they really do cover the full spectrum of products. The business is HQ'd in Colorado, and at the time of filming has a market cap of around $135 million. It's really important to point out here, this is a small company. They have annual recurring revenues of around $14 million, and they're not yet profitable. The company is burning cash. This is something that later in the video we'll touch on in more detail, but it is really important to keep that in mind. Currently, Akerna's main geographical presence is in North America, in the US, and in Canada. However, the software is available in multiple languages, and as other countries globally change their legal positioning on cannabis, is very well positioned there. So firstly, let's look at the positives. Well, firstly, it's positioned in a very high growth market. Now, whichever metrics you look at, whichever measures you use, the cannabis market is forecast to grow very, very rapidly. A large part of this is underpinned by the fact that the legal status is changing in the US. Now, whilst this has happened in a number of states, there is the growing expectation and the growing hope that this may be addressed on a federal level. Aside from the US, the same item of legalization of cannabis in various forms is on the agenda of many political parties globally. Now, this is really exciting for a Kerner as a software play. It's much more scalable and much better positioned to be able to deliver a global scale than, for example, a local or regional manufacturer. Inherently, software companies are much better positioned to develop that global scale more easily. 
Now another important thing to address here is that it's also relevant for other areas of the cannabis spectrum, CBD products for example. Again, a number of areas which are seeing really high growth globally. So that being said, participating in a market where there is such high growth forecast is obviously a strong positive. Now the next positive and the next thing I like about Akerna is the revenue model. Given the fact it's a software, it has a subscription basis and that generates really high recurring revenues. If you've seen any of my other videos on this channel, you know personally how important recurring revenues are for me in the business that I invest into. So personally, that gets a tick from me. Now it's important here to distinguish between two parts of revenue which are kind of generates, the larger software component and the smaller consulting element which we'll come on and discuss in a minute. The software side of the business with the strong recurring revenues has generated massive growth, over 44% growth in the recurring revenues in 2020. In doing this and by growing faster than the market, they've captured market share. And in a market where there is an element of first mover advantage at play, that's great to see. Now the business does also generate some revenues from its consulting side of the business. And this area of the business did have some difficulties during the initial parts of the health crisis. It is a smaller component of the business overall and it's growing at a slower rate. So ultimately, as the business grows, if its profile remains like this, the consulting element will just become a smaller and smaller component of the business. Personally, I like that as someone who likes seeing the recurring revenues and the resilience in the business that brings, that's good news. Now the next positive I see with the business is when thinking about the demand. Now its demand is absolutely mission critical. And by that I mean its customers absolutely need its software. It's not something they can optionally go without or scale back if they're looking to cut costs. It's essential, it's mission critical. A key part of this is ensuring compliance with the laws and regulation and failure to comply with those can result in massive financial penalties. Given the low cost of the software and the benefit it provides versus the high cost of the fines that could be incurred, it's a no-brainer for companies and this is not something they scrimp on or look to cut out. What's clear is that its customers really do rely on the software. What's also important to bear in mind here is how important reputation is in the sector. Word of mouth marketing is important and the reputation that Akerna has within the sector is really important and does drive business. What's more, Akerna is additionally credentialized by the fact that it does have customers who are government bodies and government agencies. This is a great reference when new customers are looking at which software to choose. However, the key point here is that once the software is in place, it stays in place. This is not an area that during times of difficulty, its customers will come and try and reduce the cost of or try and remove. And the importance of the regulation here is great. Now that does lead us quite nicely onto the next positive I see about the business. is the fact that the customers are very, very sticky. Now, whilst the company currently doesn't report their retention rates for customers, looking at similar businesses, we know this is typically very high. Once customers start using the software, it becomes very entrenched in its workflows and it becomes very difficult to switch out. Ultimately, given the cost of this software to its customers, it's not worth the headache of trying to switch to another competitor to make a very marginal cost saving and risk the massive headache and disruptions that could come if that was to go wrong. Ultimately here, first mover advantage is absolutely key and it's great to see a kernel delivering on this. In situations like this, typically you only lose customers when the customers either go bankrupt or they merge and are acquired by other people. So sticky customers, again, that's a massive tip for me. What's more, it also does act as a really strong barrier to entry. Now the next positive for me in this business is the lack of exposure to commodity prices. Now ultimately, with a number of other investments in the cannabis sector, there is a degree of exposure, whether on the revenue line or on the cost lines, to commodity prices, to the raw materials, to cannabis. This price ultimately fluctuates due to supply and demand. And so when investing in many other cannabis businesses, you have to get comfortable with this dynamic. Given the Kerner's fixed price subscription model, it doesn't have this exposure. Again, for me, that's a real positive. Next up, I think it's important to talk about the competitive landscape. Now, next up, I think it's important to talk about the competitive landscape. Now, it's not fair to say that Akerna faces no competition whatsoever. However, personally, I do believe it has a differentiated position. The competition it faces can be predominantly put into two different buckets. The first one being cannabis specific softwares and the other being more generalist. Now, when looking at cannabis specific softwares, it's competing with names such as Biotech THC, Kova Software, Flowhub. Now there are a number of other names within that list, however that just gives you a flavour for them. Now Akerna is differentiated from those names given its reputation and strength in the compliance part of the business. This is further credentialised by the government contracts and this is a differentiator versus some of the other softwares. Now this is an area that I do continue to do due diligence on. It is so important for companies to continually try and develop and improve their software and maintain that competitive advantage. Given the fast growing market and the dynamics with sticky customers, we know it's essential to aggressively at this point in the market be winning as many customers as possible. That will enable Akerna to continue delivering impressive growth figures and ultimately position itself very well to be market leader as the market matures. 
Now the differentiation for a Kerner versus non-cannabis specific software is a lot clearer. Its customers come to a Kerner because it has such strong capabilities in some areas that are particularly important. Compliance with challenging and quite specific regulation. Now for me, the next positive I see in the business and which I believe currently is somewhat undervalued is the access to data which a Kerner has. A Kerner has access to such a unique data set and given the value that such data can have, I really do believe this is a great opportunity for much greater monetization. Personally, I would love to see the management team focus on this part of the business as well. If they could monetize this data set and become a leading price referencing agency in the cannabis sector, that in itself could be a multi-billion dollar idea. In nascent industries like this, where no key player has established that reputation yet, there's a real opportunity. And given the unique access to information and data which Kerner has, I believe this is a real tangible opportunity. Another positive the business has is how its track record has delivered growth through acquisitions as well. In 2020, the company made two acquisitions. Both of these were financed with equity, and we'll come on to discuss why that's important in more detail later in the video. However, this is a positive to see them be able to successfully acquire and integrate companies. Another positive I like to see in companies I invest into is an institutional investor base. Now, there are a number of very recognized names who are currently invested in Akerna. BlackRock, State Street, Vanguard, just to name a few. Now, what's more, when you look at the investor base, on the basis of Thomson Reuters analysis, the majority of the institutional investors within the company are categorized as a low turnover. What this ultimately means is that predominantly they are long-term investors. Now, I do caveat this. This categorization comes from Thomson Reuters. And so please don't come at me in the comments for this one. Now, at this point, when doing my analysis, I do like to see what other analysts are saying about it. Now, Akerna doesn't have the greatest analyst coverage. It has one analyst covering it, Alliance Global Partners. Now, they're not the most notorious name in the world. However, they do currently have a buy rating on the stock with a price target of around $8. Now, personally, I do have a much higher price target than they've outlined there, and the report is a little outdated, so it will be interesting to see whether that's updated. Now, the final positive for me that's worth touching on is the fact they have won a number of government contracts. Now, this does come with both positives and negatives, but in this part, we're addressing the positives. Now, winning government contracts is great news. It's a stamp of approval. In itself, that's a great marketing tool to win in new customers. What's more, such contracts are typically longer in length than many other contracts. And in the government, on government agencies, you have a customer with very, very good credit quality, hopefully. Now, it does have negatives, but we'll come on to those in a moment. So in conclusion, there are a number of really exciting positives about Akerna that do personally really excite me about the opportunity. However, all good investors should definitely be aware of the risks and have potential mitigants against those before making an investment. So personally, what do I see as the main risks and the main concerns? Now, the first risk that I think that's important to address is the scale, the fact it's a tiny company. Now, first of all, thinking about this from an operational perspective, it's a small company, it's currently not profitable, and to justify the valuation, it's absolutely essential the business continues to grow. As is the case with all small businesses, there is a degree of execution risk here. Now for a Kerner to continue growing, they have to invest in that growth and that involves incurring more costs and ultimately meaning that the company is unlikely to be profitable at an EBITDA level for quite some time. Now this in itself is not necessarily a massive issue. We do need to be fully aware and understand the cash burn issue, which we will touch on in a second. However, it's important to understand. The small scale of the business also means that it's more susceptible to shocks. The loss of a contract, the loss of a customer will have a more pronounced impact on the financials than the same contract would have if it was lost from a larger company. As investors, there aren't really mitigants here. It's something that we, if we want to invest in smaller companies, have to accept the risk of. Now, its scale also comes with some potential market risks. Given its small market cap, given the small float, the stock does have a lesser degree of liquidity versus your mega cap blue chip stocks. And this in itself can drive greater volatility in the stock price. Now we need to talk about the cash burn and the business's financing. Now there's no escaping a business like this when it's investing for growth as heavily as a Kerner is and needs to, and it's not profitable, it will be burning cash. Now we know how much cash a company has on its balance sheet. We know the upcoming obligations and the investments it needs to make to deliver that growth. And so on the basis of that, we can get a good understanding and a good feel for the fact that actually the company is going to be all right from a cash burn perspective without anything unforeseen coming along for around about 12 months. Now in my analysis there, I have built in a degree of conservatism. However, it's important to note that in the coming years, the company will need to raise financing. Given the size of the company, given its scale of maturity, the most likely way this is going to happen is through an equity issuance. Issuing new shares, selling those and raising capital that way. That means for all shareholders in the business now, there will be some dilution. 
Now this risk is mitigated by the fact that we know how much cash the company currently has, we know the rate at which it's currently burning that cash, and we know that if the company does continue to grow and deliver top line growth, that those revenues will help offset some of that cash burn. What's more, as we can see from the filings, the company does have a strong focus on its cost base, and that's really good to see. During previous years, they've implemented cost reduction programs. And so seeing a management team have that focus on the cost base is great to see and personally does fill me with confidence in their capabilities. Now we did touch on it a moment before, but we do need to think about dilution more generally as well. Now look, there is likely to be more dilution down the line for shareholders, not only to finance the business on an ongoing basis, but also potential new M&A opportunities. Now during 2020, the company did make two acquisitions, both of which were funded with shares. That means the company paid no cash, but ultimately there was a dilution of the shareholders. This is something that we as investors need to be aware of. Personally, I don't have massive concerns with this. What is super important, however, is that the acquisitions that management are making are adding value to the overall group and are value accretive. If that is the case, the incremental value which those acquisitions makes offsets the impact of dilution for us as shareholders. Now, the next risk, which is really important to address and discuss, is that around regulation. So yes, there is the real risk that a change in the regulatory market in the US could massively impact the business model that Akerna has. So yes, there is a real chance that the reversal of the current regulatory status of cannabis in the US or in Canada could have a massive impact on the business. That's something that we as investors in the sector just have to get comfortable with. However, there's also the risk that potentially new markets which people are expecting to regulate and legalise cannabis make a U-turn on their decision and don't. The concern here is that that in itself would damage the growth prospects of the company. However, personally, I do believe this is somewhat mitigated by the fact there's still massive growth opportunities in all the markets that currently legalise cannabis. The market is still very mature and Akerna could deliver fantastic growth if it was to establish a market leading share in each of the markets where it's currently legalised. So personally, the way I see it is that any change in that legalisation status in any new states is all just further upside to the plan. That being said, it's something that we as investors into the cannabis sector need to be aware of. Now the next potential risk we need to discuss is the current valuation. There is the argument that this stock perhaps is overvalued. There's too much hype and investor attention in the sector and that's driving valuations up. Now personally, I do disagree with that thought. However, when you look at the business, it's trading at around seven and a half times on a forward sales multiple. That clearly is a high valuation multiple. However, on the basis of my analysis, I do believe this is mitigated by a number of different factors. Firstly, if you look at a forward sales multiple of two to three years, given the high level of growth, which a kerner is expected to deliver, Salesforce just for one example, there is a big potential for uplift in the valuation. Now the second way of looking at this is a regression analysis, looking at the correlation between valuation multiples and the forecast revenue growth. And when looking at that correlation and extrapolating out the implied valuation for a kerner based on its forecast revenue growth, again, that implies an undervaluation. Now I have done a full valuation analysis on that. If you're interested in seeing that, it take up a whole video in itself, but please let me know in the comment section below. If you have seen any of my other valuation videos, it's not dissimilar from those. However, if there is interest, I'd be delighted to share that with you. So to conclude on the valuation point, yes, the current valuation multiple is high. However, I do believe that based on the growth that Akerna is forecast to deliver, provided the company delivers on that growth, it currently is undervalued and there is still a really attractive upside to the valuation. Now, the next thing to discuss, and it's not necessarily a risk, but it's more something to be aware of, is how the business is financed with convertible notes. As part of this, there are financial obligations and ultimately at some point down the line, a dilution of shareholders again. Convertible note financing is really common for companies at this stage of development and ultimately is not something that concerns me. The potential impact this dilution has is already priced into the stock price. So again, for me, this isn't massively concerning. So now we need to talk about the government contracts and the potential negatives of those. Now, typically with government contracts, when they come to an end, there is a formal retendering process. This in itself poses a potential risk that a kerner does not win the retender and loses what is a material contract to the business. If this was to happen, that would be a big hit to the revenues. Typically, under government contracts, the suppliers are on the hooks for a lot longer to the government and have a longer period of time where they are liable for things. Personally, I see this mitigated by the fact that the company has been working for the government for a long period of time during that contract. And from that, we'll have the greater degree of intelligence and knowledge as to how they can win the retendering process. What's more, to mitigate the impact of losing that contract and the impact that has on the financials, the company will have grown during that period of time. So what is a massive contract to the company now, by that point in time, will hopefully not be so material. So what is my position on this stock? 
Now, firstly, I think it's important to reiterate, there's no getting away from the fact that this is riskier than some of the other stocks I've talked about on this channel before. Given the size of it, given the scale of the business, given the sectors it operates in, and given the liquidity profile of the stock. That being said, I think it has some really exciting dynamics, which compelled me to make an investment into the company. Now, I am invested in this stock. My investment was made at a lower share price than it's currently valued at. However, my price target is much higher than the current price target as well. I do believe there's significant potential here. And personally for me, this is a long-term hold. I want to see the company grow, become a market leader, and ultimately become the go-to provider of software to the sector. Once the market matures and it's delivered on that strategy, not only will it command a premium valuation, it then also potentially becomes a very exciting acquisition opportunity for a much more diversified software player who wants to add to their product portfolio. So look, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please smash the like button. If you're new to the channel and you like investing related content, then hit that subscribe button. And as always, please let me know your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. I find it so interesting to hear everyone's opinions, debates, perspectives, so please get involved. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in another video.